it really turned into, I came to feel that um, the two great poles of the self that Kohut talks about in his, to me, very important model of, of the personal self, the grandiose exhibitionistic self that calls for mirroring, as he says, and the idealized parental imago that needs to merge with an idealized object, that whole two needs of soul that are in there and that the self at a personal level could be reformulated that yeah, one, one need is the, is the need for empathy that's what the grandiose exhibitionistic self calls for and that we all have some of that, we all have a narcissistic line that needs empathy and mirroring. Um, but the other pole, and this is the one that Kohat doesn't write about nearly as well, um, is not held by Faustian uh, ideals like money, beauty, and power, but what really holds it for patients is integrity. So I came with a model that on the one hand there's a need for empathy and on the other hand there's a need for integrity, which means that there's also a need for analysts to learn as much as possible about empathy, which is what I think we've been doing with attunement, mirror neurons, and so forth. And recently we have to know as much about how empathy works as possible, but we equally have to know just as much about how integrity works. And so that was where I felt I, I could make a contribution. And I think it gave me the other pole in myself to what otherwise could have been rather classic, Jung describes it in homosexual men, an overdeveloped eros. You could get into that bed, under the bed, and spreading, you know, connecting there. But how far are you going to take the fantasy of, a, of, a, of, a, of an idealized Eros without wondering, where, where's the Logos? Mm -hmm. So, for me, the Logos that the JAP helped me to build toward two and training myself to think clearly and sharply really came into its own with my concept of integrity because then I had a logos that didn't violate the strong vocation to Eros but at the same time it had certain principles of value tied in with it and the whole and so that really opened up a whole dimension of um, you could call it masculine introverted feeling in me which balanced that kind of uh, um, more feminine, extroverted feeling, and somehow that really gave me enough to begin to develop the anima in a mature way. Because you know you have to do an awful lot of preliminary mm -hmm. work as a man mm -hmm. before you can even get even mm -hmm. close to developing the anima. And I would say. That those that, that that getting hold of that piece was very good for me in my development, and I do think it actually offered something that wasn't that was. Sometimes you find a deficit in yourself. At least if you're extroverted like me, you often find it outside you first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You fill a need, and then you only discover it belatedly mm -hmm. that it was the need in yourself that you're filling. But you did, that doesn't mean you didn't fill the need. Your own deficit almost helps you find the deficit mm -hmm, outside, mm -hmm. and I think that's how our field grows, is that we analysts work on our deficits in an outer and in an inner way. Mm -hmm. and, and I think theory is built around around how we, how we grow that. Just to add to um, your train of thought here, what they're finding now um, is that empathy can be used just as much by the torturer Oh, yes. as by the caregiver, and that empathy itself is quite neutral. Yes. Jung used the word sympath sympathy, not empathy, because empathy can be used so sadistically as well. And so I think that adds more to your sense that 
one needs integrity. Now, John, my, my um, current sense is that the Jungian world has grown through either the permissiveness or the rigidities. And there is a much more organic, ethical sense, both in our work with our patients and with each other. And it, would that be consonant with Absolutely. what your experience is? Absolutely. I think we're doing is? beautifully with each other. We're much mm -hmm. more ethical in our dealings with each other. Much more uh, in that in that sense of both an ethic of justice and an ethic of care that Carol Gilligan puts in that wonderful book and in, in, a, in a different voice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and. I think Esther Solomon's coming forward with the idea of the ethical attitude mm -hmm. as something that develops uh, at a certain stage, uh, very consonant. I, I, I feel that ethical attitude, or I, I feel, I feel much more of that. I feel much less um, not only manipulation of transference, and it wasn't only through sexual things, but power things. Mm -hmm.